a warm welcome to all of you to another lecture on this course on simulation of communication systems using MATLAB. In the last lecture we had uh, without using any mathematics described how do we conduct clinical trials and uh, what is the physical significance of randomness in clinical trials. Now we had said that uh, we will talk about the efficacy of vaccines and uh, how do we calculate them. So, for that I will first use the Wikipedia definition of the efficacy of a vaccine and uh, translate it to the expression given on screen. So, pointer options and I will choose the in color as black. So, Wikipedia says that that vaccine efficacy is unvaccinated infection rate minus vaccinated infection rate divided by unvaccinated infection rate into 100 percent. So, this is how you measure vaccine efficacy in percent. So, this means this is the vaccinated infection rate or in simpler terms probability of getting infected if you have not taken the vaccine. This is vaccinated infection rate probability of getting infected have taken the vaccine. So, these. So, now in order to quantify these two unvaccinated infection rate and uh, vaccinated infection rate, let us define two events. V is the event that you are vaccinated and I is the event you are infected. So, basically unvaccinated infection rate means that probability that you have not taken the vaccine. So, unvaccinated means that probability of getting infected or probability of infection that you are unvaccinated and probability of that is probability of infection given that you are vaccinated. With this you can uh, define the efficacy of a vaccine using this result. Now, let me copy this result onto a new slide and let us see how do we deal with this. So, this is the efficacy of a vaccine. So, what I want is want obtain these probabilities to get the vaccine. So, how do we again as I said one invite participants because uh, we assume that uh, so this works as under the assumption this works under the assumption that the statistical definitions of invite participants and enroll n participants. Divide 
these participants in two groups of NV vaccinated and NU equals NV randomly. So, this should be done randomly that is the key part. How do we do this randomly will be the subject of the next lecture. 3. Administer the vaccine. 4. Observe. Now, once you have uh, for fixed period observe for a fixed period of time and then after you have observed you can say that after the complete find infected people from both the groups, from both the groups, let an IU denote the number of unvaccinated people. infected and an IV denote the number of vaccinated infected. Then probability of Actually, this is V complement. So, this and this can be reduced to this. And back substituting, you can uh, calculate the vaccine efficacy. Now, this can also help you determine probability of a you pick any infected individual at random, and probability of that guy being vaccinated can be obtained using Bayes' theorem, and that will be. Naturally, you can say that the probability of random individual being vaccinated or an infected individual being vaccinated is directly proportional to the probability of uh, a vaccinated individual being infected. So, this because the denominator is the same. So, this. So, this way using Bayes theorem, we can uh, determine the efficacy of a vaccine. So, this is how medical trials work. So, the next question that we would want to answer in this case will be this. So, question that we want to answer is how do we divide these participants into two groups of vaccinated and unvaccinated individuals. So, the point here being that you have to do this randomly. So, this is a binary classification. So, every time a patient comes to you for vaccination, you toss a coin 
and uh, if it is a heads you give them the vaccine, if it is a tails you possibly give them distilled water, but uh, this does not instill too much of a confidence in people. So, naturally we have to for the trial to be double blind we have to take care that uh, people do not know that they are being injected with a placebo or uh, the true vaccine. So, what you do is you instead place uh, stuff in blue envelopes or green envelopes or yellow envelopes and uh, choose one of the two. So, now the question is that even when you want to choose this randomly you have a stack of blue envelopes and yellow envelopes and uh, inject the patient with the contents of that envelope then the question is that for a given patient how would you choose between a yellow envelope and a blue envelope. So, for this before there were computers random number tables were developed. So, a random number table is uh, in the form of a sheet of paper and these contain uniformly distributed random numbers between 0 and 1. So, the procedure for doing this is that fix the probability with which you want to administer the preferred treatment, fix the probability with which you want to administer the preferred treatment say P. Look at the next entry not a random entry you look at the next entry next entry in the random number table stir the dose if the number that is less than equal to p and administer placebo if the number that you see is greater than equal to p. So, this is the general algorithm, but if you want it to be double blind you do not want to administer the guy who administers the vaccine to know whether he is he or she is administering a vaccine or a placebo you can fix this. So, in the or to totally randomize it can fix p equals half. So, this probability p equals half the random number is greater than half administer the blue envelope and uh, it is less than half administer the yellow envelope. So, that is how the clinical trial would work and uh, this was how things are done without computers. With computers the generation of random numbers becomes slightly more interesting. So, in the next lecture onwards we will uh, look at how computers generate random numbers and uh, what does that mean for us. So, thank you uh, we will conclude this lecture now.